All right, let's try to sum up this uh, presentation about video stabilization and how to, to do that. We already talked about why it's needed to, to do video stabilization and we also looked at how to do uh, two different kinds of 2D planar transformations. And what is left here is to be able to estimate the motion in the video and then see um, how to, to correct for that using these uh, planar transformations. And finally, we'll be looking into a video stabilizer node that I wrote uh, a year ago and how that actually works. So let's uh, dive in with, with that part. So when we want to estimate the motion, um, there are two different questions to, to ask. The first thing is motion relative to what? Uh, so what type of motion do we want to, to measure? Is it the motion relative to the initial frame? So we try to keep the initial frame in place and then all coming uh, frames will be moved so they match the initial frame as, as best as possible. Should we try to minimize motion from one frame to the um, next frame? So two adjacent frames are compared and then we try to keep them as close to each other as, as possible. The difficulty in, in doing this is that um, the frame might be um, shifting over time. If you have the initial frame, then um, then you already always compare to this one and, and that will hopefully uh, be, be still. A more generic approach for, for this would be to track the generic motion in the video and then that the, the part that, that is taking out of the video uh, to that move uh, in a gentle way while still following the, the general motion in the video and that would be able to penetrate over something in, in a smooth way or, or so and there can also be different approaches on, on how to actually um, figure out how to to detect these uh, motions and we could either employ optical flow or we could uh, try to track a, a set of key points in the, the two frames we, we want to, to compare. For the uh, video stabilizer we'll look into in, in a moment, these two questions have been, been asked in, in the following way. We choose to track motion relative to the initial frame and then try to move the, the current frame back on top of the initial frame. And the reason we do this is when we are doing traffic monitoring or something else that we have where we have a, a camera that should be more or less steady looking in the same direction, we don't expect this camera to move or change orientation um, when it's doing this uh, image capture. And therefore, we would always have the, more or less the, the complete initial frame with the, the field of view, and we can use that to uh, refer up to. This also means that we have a very still frame to, to compare to, and that the video content shouldn't uh, drift over time, uh, either to the left or right, up or down, or in scale or something else. And I have also chosen to extract a set of uh, key points from the initial frames um, and then see if I can locate the similar uh, key points in all of the subsequent frames. And uh, the type of key points I'm using is the ORB um, uh, feature detector in uh, OpenCV which is the oriented uh, brief uh, feature descriptors and uh, feature points and they seem to to do a, a quite nice job for, for this task so let's uh, 
take a look at, at the actual uh, code for, for the video stabilizer. The code is available on this uh, GitHub link where you can uh, download the entire Rust node for this. And as part of that, um, some of the code is uh, pulled out into uh, a support library, which is named uh, Video Stabilizer, which we will uh, take a, a closer look at uh, now. The code is uh, here. And it's um, actually a quite few lines of code, 52 lines of code, including a few comments and a lot of uh, new lines. So, so the code is more or less uh, comprehensible. Uh, it, it's possible to gain a, a good overview of, of what actually takes place here. When you want to use the code, use the code, then. Uh, it should be initialized, so you initialize the video stabilizer class. And uh, during initialization, um, some of the, the parameters of the class are, are set, uh, or the properties. It has not seen the first frame because we haven't had the time to extract these initial points or feature points in the first frame that we want to compare the rest of the video with. Uh, we need to initiate or initialize this uh, object uh, detector, ORB uh, detector, and also this uh, fast feature detector um, for, for doing this. And finally, there is a, a brute force matcher object that seems to work quite well for matching the extracted feature points of uh, two different frames and then figure out what is uh, the motion between these two. And this BF matcher object figures out okay which feature point in the first set match with the feature points in, in the second set. Here it seems like I have some code that is, has not been uh, cleaned up. At least it's a function that is not doing anything. It might have been doing that uh, earlier. And this is the place where the actual uh, magic is, is happening. It's a stabilized frame method where you, which is available on the instance of, of a class. So you have the instantiated class and then dot stabilized frame for it to start. And the f then you input the frame from the video that you want to, to stabilize. And let's uh, take a look at what actually is uh, taking place here. Oh, sorry. I wanted to to uh, mark up some of the, the code lights and I need to remember how to do that. Uh, the lines here is only executed on the first call to a stabilized frame because uh, this is the, the part that uh, initializes the, the key points from the first frame and also have the, the feature descriptors and all this uh, contained uh, here. It also writes out uh, an image debug.png, so we have something to, to look at uh, when uh, debugging the, the program. At this stage, it might not be, be needed anymore, but I included it for, for debugging initially. Then to uh, stabilize a frame uh, or subsequent frames, we detect uh, key points and compute these uh, ORB oriented brief uh, features. And uh, when that's done, we look at how to match the feature descriptors using this uh, brute force matcher. And it is given the, um, the new descriptors, uh, feature descriptors, and the feature descriptors of the first frame. And we don't want to use all the matches. Some are, are likely uh, quite bad at, at some point, but we only want to keep the, the 100 uh, best matches in, in this case. And this is done over these uh, lines. Actually, this line uh, down here can be removed. It makes no sense. Uh, right now actually keeps all the matches. Um, 
seems to, to work okay. Um, earlier I had limited it to only contain the, the 100 uh, best matches uh, which come out of, of this uh, way of, of sorting them based on, on the distance uh, between the, the matches. And finally, we need to figure out the homography or the perspective transformation that takes the images or the, the feature points in our current frame and moves them back to their location in the initial frame or the first frame. And for that, we will extract uh, what is known as a source points and the destination points, all placed in a NumPy array. And these points are given to the find homography method from OpenCV. And then find homography will try to determine the, the best possible match. And find homography is able to deal with uh, outliers, that is features that have been matched uh, wrongly. Um, and this is a, a good thing because that will happen not only by chance, but but a certain amount of, of the detected features will be matched in, in a bad way. And it's using the, the ransack method for, for that. And there is an outline acceptance error set to five or so uh, here. And finally, we need to uh, correct the frame, the input frame um, for this uh, perspective distortion that we have uh, determined. This is conducted through this uh, warp perspective method where we need to specify the, the size of the output image and the, um, the matrix that defines the transformation and of course the input frame that, that we should, um, we should uh, stabilize. And finally, we return the, the stabilized frame and, and are ready to, to run again uh, on, a, on a new frame. And this is uh, surprisingly fast to, to run. On my laptop, it's uh, able to, to stabilize video in more or less uh, real time. So it seems I haven't stress tested it uh, enough. But uh, the good thing is it seems to, to work. So now we are more or less uh, finished with the, the recording. For the next lesson, or the next lessons in this uh, class, we will be looking into a, a mini project related to traffic monitoring, where you will be tracking individual cars in uh, drone recordings like the one you have seen uh, today. And to track these objects, you will employ both some background subtraction, video stabilization, and also to do or use a, a Kalman filter to track to be able to track individual cars uh, in the recordings. And I hope you will learn a lot from, from that. After the mini project, uh, we have Easter, uh, where all teaching are canceled. And then we continue use by looking into some control theory, Marga detection, Gazebo and Ross, and some more control theory uh, at the end. Um, and that will all be uh, tied towards uh, the final mini project where you should uh, simulate a, a UAV uh, equipped with a, a camera and use that simulation to send control signals to the, the UAV so it will be able to land uh, based on some kind of uh, visual feedback uh, acquired by, by the onboard camera. That was uh, the lecture for today. I hope you gained something from it. See you later.